Hey friends, it is Bridgie from Bougie Texas Barbecue, and today we are making some low and slow style beef back ribs. I'm going to run down the basics of smoking beef back ribs low and slow, but this recipe is a little bit special because it's definitely fall inspired. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually score the membrane. We are not going to remove it because they will fall apart and nobody wants a messy beef rib. You're gonna wanna cut deep enough to actually cut the membrane, but not the actual meat. We just wanna make sure our ribs are intact and we can impact flavor throughout the meat. Now let's talk about seasonings. Sodium draws out moisture. Because these beef ribs are not extremely meaty, you do not wanna put too much salt. So I used garlic powder, onion powder, a red all-purpose rub, but a light coat, coarse kosher salt, and coarse black pepper. Of course, you're gonna wanna add salt because no one wants to bite into a bland beef rib, but adding way too much salt is definitely a good way to dry out your beef rib. Now that we covered seasonings, as you can see, I didn't add a binder. The seasonings were sticking on very well, so I didn't need to. You can absolutely add a binder if that makes you feel more comfortable. Our beef ribs are ready to go, so it's time to heat up our smoker. Today, I'm using the Oklahoma Joe's Reverse Flow Offset Smoker. I'm going to add one chimney of Oklahoma Joe's Signature Lump Charcoal Blend and allow the tumbleweeds to do their thing and light up our charcoal before adding our wood. Usually my chimney takes about 10 to 15 minutes to be fully ignited. So that gave our ribs a little time to do a quick dry brine. Today I'm using Oklahoma Joe's new hickory wood splits. Of course, you can use your preferred wood, but hickory definitely gives beef such a great flavor. Pro tip, make sure when you're throwing your wood splits in that you make sure there's enough oxygen flow on the bottom of your splits. This way we can make sure we are running a clean fire the entire smoke. And as you can see, I am using heat resistant gloves. Please don't burn your hands, guys. I feel like this is a common sense thing, but I'm still gonna notate it. Last but not least, I'm adding one cherry wood log. Cherry wood is not gonna impact the beef necessarily. It's actually gonna help give it a mahogany color. This is definitely my wood combo when it comes to beef. I use a dominant wood like hickory or post oak to a cherry wood log that's gonna help build that pretty bark. Okay, so that's my rundown when it comes to wood and beef. I'm gonna leave this space open right here on my reverse flow for our mopping sauce that we're about to prep. But we're gonna go low and slow 250 degrees for three hours. We have hit the three hour mark, so now we can prep our mopping sauce. If you ever had wine braised short ribs, this is definitely a copycat recipe of that. So we're gonna add celery, carrots, sweet onions, garlic, and a whole bottle of wine. Now what makes my recipe different from others is the wine I chose. You don't necessarily have to go all out when it comes to the red wine, but this specific bottle of red wine was actually aged in bourbon barrels. Bourbon and beef definitely complement each other, so this was the perfect wine bottle for this specific recipe. You're also going to want to add a low sodium or sodium free beef broth. Now we're going to add some flavor enhancers, aka some fresh herbs. I'm adding a combination of fresh rosemary, fresh thyme and fresh oregano. I prefer fresh, but you can absolutely use the dried versions. And I'm also adding some bay leaves. We are officially done prepping our mop sauce, so now it's time to actually mop our beef ribs. As you can see, our bark is set, but it's definitely starting to look a little dry, so you can add a hefty amount of mop sauce. Make sure the bark is nice and moist before you close the smoking lid, but you're gonna want to mop your ribs every hour to 90 minutes until they are probe tender. If you continued smoking at 250 degrees, they would only need an additional three hours until probe tender. I do recommend temping your ribs as you mop because again, these ribs do not have as much meat as traditional dino beef ribs. This step is optional, but I highly recommend it. Once your ribs are officially probe tender, it's time to wrap. I did add some beef tallow before wrapping to keep our ribs nice and juicy. I also recommend using butcher paper versus foil. You can absolutely use foil. I'm not saying not to, but just know there is a chance that you might lose that bark you worked so hard on and you might even possibly overcook it if you pull the ribs off too late. All right, now I'm just gonna rest my wrapped ribs at room temperature, but I did want to show you our mopping sauce. Do y'all remember how much wine and beef broth this pan originally had? I just wanted to give y'all a visual of how much mop sauce I actually used during this cook. 
it's time to slice our ribs. I'm taking this inside because it did get pretty cold outside. Even though these beef back ribs don't have as much meat as dino ribs, I definitely still rest them for quite a while. I waited for the internal temperature to drop to 150 degrees before slicing. I know how hard it is to let your meat rest, especially after you've been cooking all day and probably hungry at this point but resting your beef properly allows all that moisture to redistribute throughout the ribs. So trust the process and rest your ribs properly. But before I get into the slicing part, I'm applying a little bit of pressure so y'all can see how rendered this beef rack is. You can also see that the rib bones are actually sticking out more than when I originally wrapped. Just a reminder, just because you pull off your smoked protein at 200 degrees internal doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stay at 200 degrees. There's a good chance it's going to go up 3 to 5 degrees. So just keep that in mind when you're resting your meats. If you wrap your ribs and rest them in an ice chest, for example, there's a good chance it might even go up more. I'm not even gonna lie guys, these ribs smell amazing. I couldn't help but pick at them a little. Alright, so let's check out our beef ribs. Besides the amazing smoke ring it got, they feel super rendered. Y'all already know I'm an advocate about stop squeezing your meat, so I'm just applying a little pressure so you can see the moisture. Even though these ribs have a lot less meat, they still rendered out perfectly. This specific cut of meat can definitely be a challenging cook, but they are also a good example of how amazing your smoked protein can come out when you manage a constant and clean fire as well as controlling the moisture inside your actual smoker because even this thin little piece right here came out super juicy as you just saw well guys that pretty much wraps up this video i gotta finish slicing these ribs hope y'all enjoyed this video till next time guys enjoy